Okay, good morning, everyone. Shavua'a. Not the whole way, just a little bit, if, if it's bothering the chavah there. All right. Chavi, good morning. How are you feeling? Ruch Hashem. Good, good, good. Okay, so this month, the, the month of Shvat, the month of Adar, is sponsored by the Aaron family uh, in honor of their 20th wedding anniversary and the 18th uh, birthday of their son. And it's also sponsored by Joe and Jonah Brook in memory of uh, Joe's uh, Ima. I think her name was Chaya Leah Bat Yosef, if I remember correctly. The Shachar and Alex Avram upon their uh, first year of their, their Aliyah, Ali, what's it called? Aliyah anniversary? Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov. Um, and also by anonymously, very special family that dedicated the learning of the month for the Rafua Shlema of all of Am Yisrael. Wow. That's the, um, yeah, the sponsorships are playing a, a tremendous role in, in how we're able to just keep on going strong. So I want, I want to say thank you to everyone that's been contributing. And Ramat, even if it's, there's, there's opportunities doing it daily, weekly, monthly. It's like the Mishkan. It's like, if your heart wants to, wants to share, it's right there and it, and it adds so much. There are two extra sperm here for whoever needs. I also want to, I, I said this Friday night in shul, and I'm going to say it again right now because I just don't want to miss this opportunity of stressing the, stressing the schut, the, the incredible schut that we have tomorrow night. Rabbi Hashem, please God, Rav Yitzchak Ginsburg is going to be coming here tomorrow night in English. <coughs> He's going to be giving Zayn Adar Hidvadut in English. Those of you that know a little bit of Rav Ginsburg, I don't have to say anything. And those that don't know, just to explain that this is the schus that we have to have one of the greatest, greatest, greatest Hamenei Chachamim and Mashpim and Chassidim of our generation, literally. I'm not saying it lately. Um, a, 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 a person who has transformed the lives of thousands and thousands, and his mastery of psychology, of mathematics, of science, of halacha, of course, of, of the whole world of Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, chassidut. For him to come to, out to us is something just huge. And I just want to urge everyone to come, mamash, everyone, everyone to come, and tell your friends, spread the word, and let's make it happen and give, uh, give it the proper cover that it deserves. That's tomorrow night, Monday night at 8.30. 8.30? Uh, I'm not going to tell you because that means you'll stay at home. So. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> there will be a, a projector behind him with the words that he's saying going up live while he's talking. There's someone with Rabbi Moshe Ganut that's going to be transcribing the words that he's saying, and it's also going to be happening in Hebrew. And there'll be live music. So there'll be, it'll be a Zayn other for bringing like we could only dream of. All right, so... Sure, yeah, this is, yeah, pass it down. Here, it's okay, we'll pass it down to you. Thank okay. you. So if you could please open up to Daf Lamed. Daf Lamed in Kumi Ori by Rabbi Ruven Sasson. This is, I hope that, I, I really hope that we get to the, the keto that I really want to get to today. And that, toda raba, thank you. That we get to the keto I want to get to today, but I'm not going to push myself. We'll see what we can do. I want you to look at, on, on, on page Lamed Aleph, actually. On page Lamed Aleph, the, on the, this, this paragraph that starts, Hanavim Melamdim Otanu, is where we're going to start today. And this is very important. What Rav Sasson is always telling us is to say, he's saying to us, look at what the prophets were telling us. Don't just like doze off during Haftarah reading in Shul. Look what the Nevi'im, the prophets spelled everything out. Um, what's sad is that, and I think things are getting much, much better in that regards of, of, uh, of, of, of curriculum, but pr- uh, like how much dagesh, how much of an emphasis are we, do we put on Limud HaNevi'im? How much are we putting on, on the prophets, in, the kids, like learning the prophets, learning Nevin? So yeah, it's getting, it, it is getting much better, but how much, pro, how much, how much dagesh is being put on adults learning, learning Nevin? Like parents learning the prophecies. Because when we look at the prophecies, we'll, we'll keep on saying, 
Oh, that sounds familiar. Oh, wait, that sounds really familiar. And they're like, where do I know that from? And at a certain point, it'll be like, oh, yeah, that's the story of my life. That's what's happening right now. Mamash kacha. And Rav Ruven Sasson takes the, the, the prophecies, and he's saying, look at it, Chavirim. This is not an unknown story. This is, you, you'll feel very much at home. You'll feel very familiar with a lot of these stories, sometimes in a very painful way, and sometimes in a very optimistic and beautiful and exciting way. But the prophets describe to us what galut means and what geula means. Now again, in order to understand what geula really means, we have to be very, very aware, like we've been learning, we started this in depth last week, we got to be very aware of what galut really, really does mean in the context of, the way we'll understand it best, death and life. When we describe, and I was thinking about it all, was it last week we described in the Kuzari and Rav Kook? I was thinking about their illustration of, of, the, of the Jewish state of being in the time of Shlomo HaMelech. And, and if you notice, anyone notice the Haftarah this Patlis La Shabbos? La Shem Natan Chochmah Li Shlomo. And just the, building the Beis HaMikdash, and now that you have a little bit of a taste of what was happening in the Kehila Agdola, in the, in, the, in, the, you know, in the larger community, there was life. We kept on saying that word. Everyone felt alive. We felt alive. So I'll tell you the truth. I go back and forth constantly inside and saying like, are we out of Galut, the Geula style? Like, but I, when I see, when I feel like these walls in this room shaking from how much Talmud Torah has just happened in this room alone in the last three or four days, it's very hard for me to feel Galut, Galuti. How many women were here Thursday night? Like how many women were here last, last night upstairs? Yeah. Do you know how many kids were here with their parents last night? Parent child learning this last thing in this room that was packed. There was no room. There was no room. There was no room. This is, it, so, so when I say like, oh, we have no idea what it means to feel alive, it's, it can't say that. It can't say that. But I don't want to shortchange myself in terms of the full extent of, of, of feeling alive, you know? And that's what we have to... That's the balance we're dancing between, and hopefully that's going to become clearer and clearer to us. So look in Daf Lamed Aleph, where it starts Hanavim. Hanavim milamdim otanu lehabit laomek b'ma sheamru sheagalut makbila lamavet shel adam. The prophets are telling us look deep into understanding what what it means when we say that galus is like a person's demise. It's like a person's death. Im and and you know it's interesting. I don't need to like talk about all the, these, these pieces of footage. I, I'm sure you see it more and more, these videos. I got sent a video from Orlando from like five or six different people this last week, yeah. I'm not talking about that. I'm not even talking about that. That's clearly, that, that, you know, crazy stuff about anti-Semitism. I'm not even speaking about any of, and he's not either. I'm not speaking about any of those things. That, that, that has its place, and we mentioned it enough. What we're speaking about, though, is to understand how the prophets understood what it means to be not alive and what it means, what it means to be alive. Im nitbonen b'mavet shebaal adam, nir'eh sheyesh bo shnei tzadim. Haneshama mistalaket l'amromim, umishehistalka haguf mitporer l'irisisim. This is very important. Please, like, follow every word and pay close attention. This is very important. It seems there's two, like, when it comes to death, there's twofold. One is that the soul, mistalek lam romim. As much as I've tried to find the right word in English for histalkut, the closest we get to is when you want to tell someone, get out of here, you say, tistalek mipo. Lehistalek. So it just, it mean, it just it basically means going up, or here it means nistalek lamarim, just like going up. The soul goes up when there's death. And then when it leaves the body, then the body starts to disintegrate into resisim, uh, pieces, like little pieces, right? So imken, fourth line, pizu am Yisrael bagalut, hu bechinat ha'itpoorerut shel haguf. He's saying, it's so, it's so interesting, right? What did he just say? Am Yisrael, it's heavy, right? It's heavy. It's not so chassidish. 
Chasidish, chasidish would be, what do you mean? We went everywhere to go and lift up sparks, yeah. right? That's not a, it's, it's, I don't know if that's a bedieved way of looking at it or not, but he's saying, Galut is, we're going to all these different countries all over the world, right? And that, that, that's like the body, like mit porer, uh, crumbling, mm-hmm. crumbling. And, and why does that happen? Zonigremet machmat siluk koach hachayut. Aneshama, the soul's not in the body anymore. So the soul's not in the body, just like with a regular physical death. The body then doesn't, you know, gets, goes into small pieces, v'chulei. Doesn't have the soul, haneshama, shemeachedet et kol ivrei aguf keechad. To the extent that anyone here feels alive right now, that's because your neshama is, what, is what's keeping your body together, physically. When the soul departs from the body, there is no force that keeps our body together working in unison. Now, we see illness quite often happens when there is a lack of a connection to the soul. What happens when we're fully, fully connected to our soul in the greater, to the greatest extent? And we had one example of this throughout our whole Jewish history. When the soul is fully reigning over the body. What happens to the body? Mamad Har Sinai. What happened at Mamad Har Sinai to any physical ailment? Everything was working. Everything was working. There, were no, there was no tent. It was all working together. The body was fully working. Why? Because the neshama was in full control. There was complete ichud. There was a complete unification of all the different body parts that are working under the sovereignty of the neshama. Right? So when the neshama is removed from the body, what happens to the body? It falls apart. He's saying that is, that's be'etzim galut. Right? For thousands of years. It seems the body was falling apart. Mimeila, third line from the bottom of this paragraph, Mimeila, tzarich lehavin, sheyesh evdel atzum ben am Yisrael be'aretz le'am Yisrael ba'galut. Thank you. Anyway, just understand there's a tremendous difference to where when the, when, the, when the bones are all together in the right spot to when they're not together in the right spot, right? Like the difference between cells of a body that are part of a, of a massive orchestra working together to all these different cells of a body that are working independently. Without an ishama and without life. That was a good opportunity. Um, the, um, what was it? Um, I'm, I'm looking at the word resisim. Okay. And when we learn something, some of these amazing svarim, like they'll use the word litbonen. You don't say tistaklu, you mm-hmm. say tiponenu. Mm-hmm. It's a whole mm-hmm. depth of, of looking, meaning, understanding, and, and everything else. Resisim is fascinating. He didn't say chelkikim, mm-hmm. parts, because mm-hmm. parts come out as a kind of a whole that's going to go together. He didn't say mitzotot. So what does Rishi say, Lila, and it, would that help us mm-hmm. understand why he used Rishi sin? Because it's a very powerful Could word. Could be. What does Rishi mean? Shards, no? Yeah. Shards. But, but the kind that you because can't put back together. What's that? It's as if it was something that's broken with force, kind of. It actually will. It, it actually will explain why. He, I think. Oh, well, yeah, okay. yeah. I, 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 I think so. Um, now, he says like this: There are all these different movements in the life of man. We have moments we're feeling so good, and then it happens sometimes, very rarely, that people don't feel so good. I'm kidding. It happens, it, 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 it's quite often, right? The ulam, the, the, that's like going back and forth, back and forth. But however, hamita, death, hi hamatsav hayarud beyoter sheyachol yot leadam. You can have good days, you can have bad days, but at least you're having days. <laughs> death is you don't have days, right? You're not working with anything. Leo, gamarno, end of story. Understand, we have good days, we have bad days, but at least we have days. Death is... And there's no days. It's not like, it doesn't fall under account of something. It's nothing, right? This is a disintegration of, there's basically a complete 
falling apart of, of life itself. Rak hevla tegarme, that means a ruach shebe'atzamot, the spirit that is in the bones, and this is going to play a big role of us understanding what we're busy doing here making aliyah, shehi me'at ha'chayut shenoteret ba'atzamot, there is a spirit in, within the bones, the atzamot, the actual bones, and that is the little bit of life that is left in our, which is in our bones, Kosheret betsura ne'elemet et haguf shehitbala el nishmato shebam romim. At a certain point, when the body is like kimat dead, or dead even, even dead, there is a certain element of vitality that's found in the bones itself of a person. All right? That is one of the reasons why we go to Kivre Tzadikim and Davin, because the bones themselves contain within it an immense power and kedusha, okay? The etzem, the etzem. Obviously, you know in Hebrew, the bone, the word for etzem also means essence. The bones of a person have within it some life force. This is very, very important, especially to understand the obvious prophecy we're going to be looking into now. Because what prophecy are we going to go now into? Exactly. Chazon ha'atzamot ha'yeveshot the prophecy of the drive bones by holy brother Ezekiel, right? By the Navi Yechezkel. This is very, very important. Omnam le'olam lo yinatek achut ha'mechaber ben aguf ha'neshalma, shechen rak kach yuchal aguf l'shuv l'tchiat olamim. What is it that makes resurrection possible? The etzim aluz, the bone, right? And, and that's, we're not going to get into etzim aluz right now, but basically the body could be dead, but there's something in the atzamot, in the bones itself, that has a certain level of chayut, which enables the possibility for tchiyat ametim. Now we have to understand something. If 99% of the Jews of the history of the world walked into this room right now, they would say, this is Tchiat HaMetim. They wouldn't say, oh, this is a nice next chapter. They would look at the fact that people are sitting around learning Torah with Simcha in Eretz Yisrael. They would refer to this as Tchiat HaMetim, the resurrection of dead. Nothing short of that. Is that clear? Do you, be- I mean, do you understand that? 99% of the history of Jewish people any Jew that ever lived from the time of Churban Bayit Rishon would come here, would walk around anywhere here, all around Eretz Yisrael, and they would say, this is, wow, there, there was a Tchiat HaMetim that took place. It's true. The Rambam said that one of the, th- one of the 13 principles of faith are, Ani I believe in the concept of Tchiat HaMetim. Nothing short of that. Why? Because, the, I hate to sound like this, the Jew was dead. I sound so, you know, this is like, if someone would choose to like cut this piece, and then this would go, this would go viral. The Jew was dead, right? He was, she was. And, but what wasn't dead? The chiyut that came from the atzamot, the bones. And we're going to try to understand what are the bones? Where did the bones play a role? What are the bones today? It's going to be very, very important. <coughs> The dwindling down of life, Don't worry, I'm going to translate all this. This dwindling down of life, where man stopped feeling, stopped sensing anything, stopped thinking, stopped, wa- stopped wanting. All that's left is a garin ne'elam, a hidden seed of chayut, of life, that are found in evarim hamufradim, dispersed uh, limbs, it was found in the life of Am Yisrael in the most uh, intense level of dwindling down of, of life force. This 
This is the breaking that comes to the body when the light of the neshama is mistalek from it. Omlam od amok mikach tzolev chesron neshama, and even deeper than that, the neshama feels that it's lacking. Where? The neshama doesn't feel like it's lacking when the body is dis- when the body is not doing good, but when there's siluka nevua, when there's prophecy, no longer takes place amongst Am Yisrael. Ve'or ha'chokma. And the light of wisdom also stopped taking place amongst Am Yisrael. Risuk chayei ha'kodesh ve'amikdash, a general sense of a life of holiness and a life with Beis HaMikdash that stopped taking place. Bitul Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin stopped. Chokmat ha'torah ve'od. Kol elehem bituim shel histalkut ha'neshama. All these things that we lost are expressions of the neshama leaving us. When do we speak about this publicly? Really, once a year. When do we actually speak about this in shul? Like, another part, it's even more, it's even more chazak. On Yom Kippur, and the Musaf, and the avoda of the Kohen Gadol. When we go through the whole avoda of the Kohen Gadol, and it's just like, out of this world. One year, one year I did this. I, I, wish, I, could, I wish I remember to do this again. Every year I say I'm going to do it. I was chazen in a certain shul, and I did it with the Machzor HaMikdash. Do you know what Machzor HaMikdash is? Do you know the Temple Institute? Did you ever see it, Esti? It's an unbelievable thing. You have also the Haggadah of the Machon is unbelievable. Haggadah HaMikdash is amazing. But when, you, when you're davening for the Amr, even not for the Amr, when you're doing your own you know, keeper davening, and so they have there all the illustrations of what you're actually saying about what, what, what the avoda of the Kohen Gadol, what it was like in the Beis HaMikdash, right? So it takes you through this, just this beautiful, beautiful spatzir. You know what a spatzir is? Yeah. Like a, yeah. Is that, it's stroll. Yiddish, right? It's a stroll. stroll. Yeah. Yeah. Through the Kohen Gadol's avoda in the, in the Beis HaMikdash in Yom Kippur. And it is, it's like we were learning last week, the way the Kuzari and Rav Kook were describing, right? And then, once you do it and you go through the whole thing, right? And then it says... Basically, and now we got nothing. <laughs> and then it hits you, like, oh my God. Like, you know, Emet Ma Neheda, we're dancing, right? Ayako and Gadol, it's the peak of davening. And then a second later, yeah, that's not happening. We don't have that anymore. That's not happening anymore. And it sinks. It's like, it's such a dagger. It, it sinks in so, so strong. So he's saying over here, think about all these things. Remember what the Kuzari told us last week? How Rav Kook described it. And then imagine that all of that, all of those things which made us feel alive are taken away, how could anyone feel alive? Why would anyone f- still feel alive? Why would any Jew still feel alive after the neshama stopped b- having a place of expressing itself? Why? Why would anyone still feel alive? So that's why I said before, if most Jews from the history of the world would show up now and they'd see, why are you all feeling alive? They, m- they must say, ah, then it, it must be there's been tchiyat ameitim. There must have been the resurrection of that, because otherwise doesn't, none of this makes any sense. This Sefer is going to explain to us why we're so optimistic and excited, basically. Because otherwise it doesn't make any sense, right? It just doesn't. Bitul ha'chaim shleimim shel ha'uma sheyada plain. Okay, now go to the next page. This is really what I, what I wanted to get to. This is, this is like a, one of the most important pieces I ever learned from Rav Weinberger. When he explained this, when he taught this, this is a very, very um, uh, important piece in the, in the picture of everything. Just, I don't have a watch. What time is it? Does anyone know? 9.30. 9.30. Okay, okay. Besides the Shmaya. Let's see, let's see how well we could do this. With a lot of help. Et matzav ha'uma begaluta v'et ha'dildun ha'noa shebagalut Yisrael metaer rabbeinu ha'gra v'ze l'shano. The gra, the gaon of Vilna, is going to explain to us to the best of his ability and our, the extent of our understanding what we're trying to talk about, what we've been talking about this whole time. Ve'en, look what the Gra says, the Gaon of Vilna. Ve'en itanu yodea adma. None of us know how long it's going to take. Ad ye'are aleinu ruach mimarom. Until a spirit, a wind, what really means here, a spirit, from above, will come down and be ye'are aleinu. Like, you know what inirui dam is? How do you say that in English? 
transfusion. Transfusion. We don't know how long it'll be till this spirit from above will experience a, 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 a spirit transfusion. We don't know. And that's why with Nuk and the transfusion is the same Shorash. Oh, very good, very good, very good. Very good. Cool. Mindy, you're with the letters all the time. The letters are like, oh, sh- <laughs> very good. Ki me'et shecharav habayit yatsa ruchenu. You have to understand, our spirit has left us since the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, which is ateret roshenu. It's the crown of our head. It's what made us who we are. V'nishanu rak anachnu hu guf shela belo nefesh. We've basically been walking bodies when we were able to stay just physically alive. Now he says, This is the grass, says this, okay? Wow. 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 So it's not, yeah. I get so happy when, like, you, you realize, I don't, it's not me. I don't make these things up. Like, it's actually coming, the sources are saying this. The gra said this. Going out to outside of the land is going into the grave. Yeah. Veharima mesovevet aleinu and the yeah yucky stuff are is is basically surrounding us. Ve'en be'adeinu lehatzil. And we have no way of saving those that are eating our flesh, the idol worshippers. And nonetheless, but in, in this place called the Kever, you see that there were these tremendous groups of, of Chaburas and Yeshivas set up in these places. Um, you know, I, I think like what he's thinking, what I'm, what I'm hearing here is like, you know, Naharda, Pumbedita, these are the main yeshiva, these are the main yeshivas that were set up in, in Bavel when we first went out into Galut because there was no way for us to, to stay alive. He says, yeah, we set up shop, but at a certain point near Kava Basar, the, we're getting graphic, but it's okay, huh? Rats. Can I just clarify the Just... Four, four, four more were Chutzlar, it's just one big camera. Ve'atzamot nifzeru pizur achar pizur. And the bones are dispersed, dispersion after dispersion. You know, the only time I saw this with my eyes, literally, was in Berdichev. When we went, the first time we went on the men's trip to the, the kever, which apparently wasn't the kever of Rebbe Levitz in Berdichev, but it was the area of where Rebbe Levitzak B'ditcheva is buried. And some of you women were there as well. Nachon? Yeah. You were there, right? Um, so, the Gemara speaks about a, a situation of what's called Beta Pras. Beta Pras means a Beta Kvarot, where it's basically, it's basically a, a situation where there's bones just lying around everywhere, right? Like the halachic st- status of these things. So, Reb Moshe Rothschild was with us on that trip, and that was one of these times where I was so jealous of, of uh, him not being a Kohen, because he, with a bunch of the Chevre, walked around the cemetery and basically did hakamot matzevot. But you ash. Mamish, you saw bones all over the place. And that's when I realized that I, I really shouldn't have gone, uh, you know, even taken the road with the car like I did to get to that place as a Kohen, because there's no way you know. Right, but when he said so, when I first learned these these words about like pizur achar pizur, the bones scattered around everywhere, and you have an, if you have an, a, a visual of that, it, it really sinks in deep. He says, "Look, Am Yisrael, we were just bones scattered. There was no life. There was no life. Our body was was rotten. There was no life. It was just bones. It was just bones." But you know what? It was just bones, but at least there were still bones. And who are the bones? What are the bones that were still kayam? The, the scholars in Am Yisrael were the bones. They were the only 
they were the only spirit of life all these years of Galut left in the Am. Ma'amidea guf, and they were the ones that would put the body to, to, to the extent that we, we were able to walk around with any sense of feeling alive, was only the schut of the life that came from the Ba'atzamot. Ad, oh, <laughs> Ad shenir kevu ha'atzamot. Until he says, even the bones themselves got, were, became rotten. V'lo nishar ela tarvad rekev me'itanu menasa afar. And then what ended up happening is that you became nothing but dust. Shacha le'afar nafshenu. V'anachnu mekavim ata le'tchiyat ha'metim. And we are hoping now for tchiyat ha'metim. Hitna'ari me'afar kumi. What does that mean, hitna'ari me'afar kumi? Shake yourself off from the dust, arise. Every Friday night. ruach mimarom aleinu. And the grass says, and we're hoping for a spirit from above to come and be infused in us. This is the gra. When was the gra alive? 250 years ago? Close to 300 years ago? Nachon? This is what the Gra is saying. So look what he says here. Hagra melamed otanu kitzad lehabit betzura makifa al tahalich galut. The Gra is teaching us how to look at the process of galut in a in a tzura makifa, in basically a surrounding way. Loli rot et hashever rak beroved adam prati. Don't just look at the nebuch individual Jew. Ela litfos et am Yisrael kehavaya achat klalit. Adam Klali. But looking at Am Yisrael as one, like that, what the Arizal calls, Sod Guf Echad, the secret of one body. That we are one body, all of Am Yisrael. Uminikudat Mabazo, Leavin Mahut, et Mahuta Galut. And from here we can start to understand what the essence of Galut is really all about. A Galut Hikemavet, it's like death. Ba'amavet Kamur, Ba, like we said before, Ba li de bitui bishne revadim. Death comes twofold. One is Yetziat HaNeshama V'Silukalam Romim, when the soul leaves you and goes up to heaven. And the second is V'Hit Poreirut HaGuf B'Kever, and then what happens to the body in the grave. Shnei HaRevadim HaLalu Hitkaimu Ba'am Yisrael Ba'Galut. Both of these pieces of the, the stages of the process of death happen to us in Galut. One, the nish, our, nish, our souls basically left us. The second, we were in Chutzlar, it's rotting away. Rotting away. And like the Gros says, Bilashon Agra, Ki me'et she'charav ha'bayit yatsa ruchenu ateret roshenu. From the time we left the Beis HaMikdash, our ruach, the crown of our head, left us. That's what? Zoi Yashchina. Nishmat Am Yisrael. Shen alta ve'histalka lam romim. Ve'ilu Am Yisrael kan, Shu aguf shela, nishanu rak anachnu hu aguf shela belo nefesh, veitzia lachutz laretz hu akever. Like he just said, <coughs> we were just left with the body, and leaving out the chutz laretz was basically the body going into the cemetery, going into the grave. Gam talich idal delut shel am Yisrael bagalut, makbil talich it porerut aguf bakever. The dwindling down of the body of, of am Yisrael and galut. Is compared to the process of a of a body of a body falling apart in a kever, and the Gra teaches us like this: Hagra melamed sheze sod yiridat hadorot mitkufat hageonim shaadai notra yeshiba bevavel kem shech letamud abavli. The Gra says this is basically how the generations have been. He says yiridat hadorot like the descent of generations have been happening generation after generation. From the time of the Geonim that were still in the Yeshiva and Bavel after the, 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 the Talmud was, was formed. You see, back then when in Bavel, you know that everyone, I mean, everyone was learning. Everyone was learning. Everyone knew Gemara. Everyone, everyone was in the parish of the story of Torah Shabbat It was the only way thing that kept us alive. Everyone. Everyone was part of it. But slowly, slowly, as the soul was still not part of how we were able to function, even that stopped functioning and playing the role that it used to play for us. 
אני חושב, לאט לאט התפוררות התעצמה, שיעורי הרוח נסתלקו, וממילא גם גדולי וגאוני התורה הלכו והתמעטו בקומתם. We used to have גדולים. We used to have geniuses. When I, I, don't, I don't just mean smart geniuses. We used to have spiritual geniuses. Like people that were... Like I, I, I spoke to you I, in the beginning of Shir about a genie, a gadol, that we ha, is coming to see us tomorrow night. The, 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 the people were filled, filled with Rav Ginsburg's. You understand? That, that, that was packed. Not just that. We, we also had little children running around in the time of... The Beis HaMengdash running around prophesying also, right? We, it was filled. That's who we were. That's who we were. Today we, today we get excited when, when like, one Rav has like a good meme and, and, and we get so excited. Like, wow, look how, look how cool he sounds right now. We get so excited. Do you understand what we're getting excited over? It, it's, it's crazy. But we get so excited when like Amari Stoudemire starts learning Daf Yomi. If you know who Amari Stoudemire is. You know who he is, yeah. Right. <laughs> became a, a real, a real yid. Real real Shabbos. We get so excited, right? We get so excited. It's, it's, what, what gets us excited is so it's, so, it's so backwards, you know? It's so backwards. We don't get excited by the real giants because we barely have them. And even when, we, even when they're around, we're too, there's so many mechitzas between us and understanding what a spirit is in front of us. But we used to have this around us all the time. But he's saying that, that, that left, that ruach left, and, and the gdolea gonea tola al chumit matu be komatam, kfi shebali edui bitui by evdel ben arishonim, la achronim, va achrone achronim. I'm going to explain this. Do you know when we say there are, we, we, the rishonim, who are we referring to? Or the achronim, or the gaonim, or the tanaim, or the amoraim. These are different. Words you probably heard a lot in Shi'urim. Whenever no one knows the source, they say, the Rishonim say, and it's always like this, or the Achronim say. But what does that even mean? The firsts and the lasts? What does that even mean? We're so far removed from understanding who the spiritual giants of our people were. Uh, it's, not, it's not our fault. This is what Galus does to us. The fact that we're even... He- you have to understand, it's not Khalila any Muslim. We're just saying we're removed so much from the reality of what used to be the spiritual infusion of Am Yisrael. We're so removed from it. We're so far removed from it. And something new is happening now that never happened before, but for thousands of years, there was no Yishai Ribo turning on Am Yisrael to start davening again. You understand? There was no. It, it, it wasn't. There was no. For thousands of years, there was no Halev Shali Nikra I mean, I shouldn't say that. There was only Halev Shali Nikra which was taking place, and no one knew that you could daven over it and speak about it and feel close to Hashem. But there was no spiritual infusion in Am Yisrael. It was getting darker and darker and darker and darker. It wasn't getting more and more and more bright. Till when? When do you think? Don't... Don't, don't run immediately to 1948. <laughs> we were thinking. When did it start? Well, you're talking about Velazhin. Rav Kook is before 1948 also, right? Rav Kook learned in Velazhin, right? We see, we're going to see, when did, it, when did we actually have the... When and how did we actually think that Tchiyat HaMetim is possible to start happening as a people. It's not today. It's a Tkufa already. It's a Tkufa that we're in already. But the Gras sent his students. The Gras started sending his students. Not all of them made it. Nachon. He started sending his students. Nachon. Absolutely. Could also be when we started opening up and letting everybody learn. At one point, there was just a small amount, a small number of men who were allowed to sit and learn and then slowly it opened up that anyone's allowed to sit and learn. So Rav Ginsburg is, has been leading a kav, a machshava, of talking about hamaapechot, the revolutions. And the revolutions he's been speaking about have been women's access to learning Torah. It's also been about teaching Torah, 
what you teach to, the, to non-Jews. Yeah, opening it up bichlal in the world. So definitely that, that plays a role, but we're going to see. But again, between Bayit Rishon and between things starting to look pretty, it was ugly. <laughs> it was dark. It was really, it was a cemetery. It was a Mamasha cemetery. When we were in Mitzrayim, we went down to the 40 ninth level, and then we worked our way back up. So maybe we have to get, we have to get that <coughs> down to start making our way back up. Could be that's a way, of course. That's generally how we look at any process of like that. Nachon. Nachon. So, what? I'm sorry, what's, what's the time? 45. 45. There's, this, there's so much here I want to do. I'm trying to like contain myself. Okay. Let, let's, um, let, let, let's continue. <laughs> Let's continue in the next paragraph. Vekachu gam benogel leklam al Yisrael bagalut. Siluka neshama klalit or ashchina mekir beinu. Silek vehelim miitano etikar chayenu. You know, people are always walking around today saying, "What is my life really all about?" No one asked that question in the time of the Beit Hamikdash. No one asked that question. And for thousands of years, when we say Sheibana Beis Hamikdash, I want to give you a new kavana. The kavana is, Rebbe Hashem, I want to live in a world where I don't have to wonder what my life is all about. That's that's what we're speaking about. Be'et Asher Neshama Ita Bekirbenu, when our soul was in our midst, Hayinu Melei Chayim Adirim, Chayi Nefesh Veruach, we were so in touch with being alive, Chayi not just being alive, Chayi Kodesh Veneshama, a life of holiness, a life of soul. Prophecy, the heroic figures from the Tanakh, Malchut Yisrael v'chokmat ha-Sanedrin, kol eile hem giluei chayim adirim v'ashilim me'od, sh'ayu lanu b'chol otzmatam b'et asher ayinu b'chayim, k'sh'aneshama ha-klalit sh'ayta b'kirbenu. When we, when the soul, when the general soul, was alive and pumping blood into the body of Am Yisrael, the big body of Am Yisrael. All these things we're speaking about were basically givens. This is how we were operating all the time. Siluka, removing that life force from the body of Am Yisrael. He'elim me'itanu etikar gvurat ha'chayim ve'olam. It hid from us, it basically, through, it, it, it started to... to um, conceal from us what it really means to be alive and what it really means to shine. Hakol hitztamek v'neelam. Ad she'en lanu klal yecholet l'sha'er ma'i otam adirat chayim adira. As much as, I'm, as we're trying to illustrate and, and understand what it was like to feel alive, it's still, a, it's still a sod. It's still a secret. We still don't really know. I think the closest we get to it is when we have moments in our life that it's our neshama that's running the show. And when is that? When you get, I don't like to say lost, but when you get found in a state of davening, communally. That's probably the only moment you, you have this like similar experience to what we're, what we're speaking about in the state of, of, of when the neshama is not concealed from us. Avur haguf, four lines from the bottom. For the body, ikar galut nitfas b'machovea kever v'arima she'ochel etatam. For the body, the ikar of galus is perceived as the pains of the of being in a, a grave, and the I hate to say this the worms that are eating up your flesh, which is what we've been there. Shem kol yisurei am Yisrael me arle haomot, which we experienced all of us, no matter where we're, no matter where what country our ancestors are from, each of us had that in our DNA. Everyone, no one was. Spared. No one. We can start going, I can ask you, each of you, where are you from, right? Where your where your answer? Each of us had this at a certain point by our great 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 grandparents at a certain point in life, right? Ach avu shlemut komata adam. But when we're talking about the full picture of, of man, Hamavetu Barosho Rishona Siluk Shel Kolot Smata Chaim Veoram. Death is not when people are torturing me. Death is when I don't feel alive and no one's torturing me. See, if someone's torturing me, 
I have a reason. I could say it's his fault. It's her fault. When no one's standing over me with a whip and I can't get any feeling of being alive in me, that's, that's, the, that's, that's torturous. You ever go through a situation in life where you feel completely incapable of doing anything, of expressing anything, of feeling anything, and you don't know why? You know how that, that doesn't that drive you, Meshuggah? It drives you crazy, right? It drives you insane. People call it writer's block or all these different things, right? But really, we've, we've, been, we've, we've suffered that for many years as well, where it wasn't just the poor, it wasn't just the porrits. It wasn't the Yamach Shemo standing over me. It wasn't that. There were times in life where there were no porrits. Very few, but there were, you know, there were times in life where it wasn't the enemy standing over me. It was just me being incapable of feeling anything, and I couldn't understand why. It's because your neshama left your body, as a people, as a kuma. He's saying that really is the headquarters of death. The body being eaten up by worms, by meaning the, the parrots and the anti-Semites standing over you, that's the shlava sheni. That's the second level. The first level is living a neshama-less life, which is one of the ramifications of galut. Bottom line, Ikara velut alamet, the main mourning over the dead, he al atzmiut haadam shenistalka meitanu. We 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 mourn the we, we we don't mourn the fact that someone's in a grave. We mourn the fact that they're not that their atzmiut, what made them them, their light has kilu nistalek lam romim, has gone up to the to to the heavens. Uli idach. And now he says like this, having said all this, let's understand what it means to ask for geula. When we show up and we ask Hashem for redemption, we have to, we have to accustom ourselves in the way that we look at this concept called geula and think about the greatness of spirit, the gvurat neshama and the greatness of the soul שצריכים לשוב אלינו. בעת אשר הרוח האלוקית תשוב ותשרה בקרבנו, and when the godly spirit will come back and dwell in our midst, כשתחזור השכינה במילואה, underline that line 500 times over, כשתחזור השכינה, when the שכינה comes back, במילואה, in its full capacity. Litzion. This is the nakuda that I'm most sensitive about personally, because what we're what he said over here is like yala. Let's think about it one second. So we already said a new kavana for Yibana Beit Hamikdash. A new kavana is Hashem, please let my children live in a world where they don't break their head over trying to understand what you want from them. Because in the time of the Beit Hamikdash, we knew what we wanted from God, we knew what God wanted from us, and it filled us with life, and it was great. Here he's saying, let's understand further what it means to ask for geula. Asking for geula is not only let all the Jews move to Eretz Yisrael. It's not. It's not. That's not asking for geula. That's asking for a process in geula. That won't make the Shekhinah come back b'milu'ah. The Shekhinah coming back in its full entirety, in its full capacity, is when this Ruach, is when this spirit, that the Graz said, we're waiting for it to be infused with us from Marom, comes back to us. We're asking Hashem for the injection. That's what we're asking for. Our Ishtadlus, listen clearly, our Ishtadlus is to gather all the bones together to be ready for the body of Am Yisrael to experience a Tchiyat HaMetim. But the Tchiyat HaMetim, so that our job is, gather, Lech Knos, like Purim's coming, Lech Knos et Kol HaYehudim, come gather everyone together. So our Avoda is, yeah, everyone, we gotta be gathered together, it's, it's time. We gotta come back, we have to all be together. But that's still not gonna solve, that's not the end game. The end game is, it happens while I'm asking for all the bones to come back together and for me to play a, a vital role in, in gathering of the bones 
is to say, but Hashem, only you know that your presence can only fully be restored in this world when you decide to inject that spirit again from above, the Ruach Mimarom. But what we're going to see is that it's not just only up Kivyachol to waiting for Hashem to inject the infusion. We could do two things. One is that we can gather the bones and start coming back together and form a body of Am Yisrael. But there is something that we can do as well that'll help shake up Hitnari Me'afra Kumi. We can actually play a role in bringing down that spirit um, and not just waiting for it to appear from above. And that's basically us re-examining the prophecy from Yechezkel, of the, of the prophecy of the dry bones, looking, pay close attention to every letter that Yechezkel and Avi, that's brought down in Yechezkel and Avi, so that we can feel more guided in our conscious effort to bring Geula to the world and to end fully, completely, the status of Mavet, which is equaling death, equaled Galut, exile, and bring it to a state of life, which equals um, Geula. Geula. I know it's a lot today, I know it's pretty heavy, but are there any questions before we wrap it up for today? We're good? You, no one's going to come back? <laughs> You're scared? Jenny, you don't have any questions? <laughs> No, no, you, you came like, out of the cavern. Even our bones were disintegrating into dust. Yeah, but you, but so you actually like, came out of the cavern, though. You, you, you left the cavern. I'm not in the cavern anymore. No. Okay, just not, according the, <laughs> not according to the. Not according to the Gura. You voluntarily left. You came to Israel. I went on vacation. vacation. <sighs> hey, whatever gets you here. Right. <laughs> right. Right. No, you're. There's a lot. Okay, I just there's, want to clarify that point. I wasn't sure where the Okay. Yeah, yeah. First or, first or second? You're talking about the first, right? Yeah. No. no. The, the second was, um, uh, the second, I understand. The second, no. First. That, that's, the first one right. I don't understand because we were in this state. So the only thing I think of is that human nature, again, is that the Wait, wait, we that spoke we, about it last week. Mash, an amazing quote. What you're saying is, like, I, I think about it quite often, it's like, wait a second. If we lived in a situation, <laughs> if we lived in a state, <laughs> right, then like, what could have happened, right, then what could have happened, and we have, we, like I mentioned last week, that you know, the heart still has to, po- I think about well, the, 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 well, what Shlomo said, it stopped, it stopped breaking the heart. Like, it's basically like, you have children, what like you have you have kids and they st- and the and the schus of having ch- of having a child stopped breaking right it was a given it was a given and so to speak it's almost like a, the 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 bayit needed to be destroyed only to remember again what the privilege of having a child is all about that's one way of understanding it but the, it's still your question's still so there how, next time? how do we do better next time your, but your question is still there it's still there it's like but wait a second. If it's the Beis Hamikdash, right? How could it be that we even got to a place that our children or whatever the gifts of life were stopped breaking our hearts? That's a very, very good shaila. I'm not going to pretend that I can answer that because I don't understand it. Huh? The Chalban speaks about it. Okay, we should. I want to. If if we source us to learn. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah. But it's very important to understand it's part of the human evolution. Yeah. Evolution. You have to go down and to learn intellectual Gemara Kop. And when they were, so, they could have that high consciousness, but they could see, they could see the kedusha and the shechina and everything. So it was, they were descended into idolatry. Right. So Hashem, so the the gedolim asked to let it go, that ability to be on that high level, and to play the idolatry. And the same, same, they lost. Lost it. Right. That, that, right. So it's, our consciousness had to grow from that point. It's like it's the 6,000 years. It, it, it would have been, you know, wonderful if we could stand this level. But yeah. then Hashem has this, you know, the divine plan. We had to go through this. So now, now, oh, Hashem, we live in Israel and we are under the Fiat. Right. Right. But they right. had to go through all this. Look at it in a total picture. Now. Yeah. Yeah. 
But you said at the end, it was very unclear. You said, and what's our role? It was like very unclear. Oh, I mean, fizzled out. Right, because they didn't answer it. It's just saying oh, that they're, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I'm waiting for the punchline. Right, right. We have next week. <laughs> I know, it's the week. Yeah. Based on what she was saying, is it true of the end of the supplies? Yeah. Like, as our gates are so become stronger, does our gate of Yitzhahara also become stronger? Or don't, no, there was no actual Yitzhahara that, that was subjugated in the times of the base of Mikdash. And that wasn't the reason. I'm sure the Yetzirah existed as long as humanity existed, but something stronger, the Yetzir Tov had something stronger to work with. Okay, so you're not a, consci- a stronger a consciousness. Yeah. Fell a Again, I, I would like to see the sources that were mentioned here before of different Rabbeim speaking about this to understand. That, w- that would be great. That would be great for us to understand it better. I'm glad you're bringing it up. All right, Shavuot Tov, everyone.